Welcome to episode 8 of Madoka Magica. Last time was very heavy for Sayaka. We got some characterization and good scenes with Kyoko as well, but especially for Sayaka, dealing with Hitomi wanting to get with Kyosuke, her feelings about that and about her soul being in the soul gym and thinking badly about herself for regretting saving Hiyomi and just really being down on herself as a person and then just kind of breaking at the end and it was it was messed up Sayaka is my favorite and so this sucks to see her in such a sad state but it's also extremely interesting and makes her even more so my favorite character because of all this emotional stuff that she's going through so I can't wait to see more we're gonna watch and discuss I've got the subtitles and timer on screen if you want to follow along that way, or you can pull up the episode on your own. We're starting after any logos, got the red sun thing here on the screen, so let's get into it in three, two, one, play. So she is just going to town on this witch that she's already defeated, she's going crazy, emotionally detaching. The world is falling apart. We're uh, we're in the last stretch of episodes here. There's not a ton of time left. So I really have no idea where it's going to go. I can't wait to see. Wow, what is happening there? Sayaka, um and what is gonna happen to her is she gonna get there's not a lot of time for her to like heal from this and get better like i had kind of hoped for before it kind of seems like she is just broken now and it's not gonna end happily gave her the grief seed she's like a different person madoka is sad again whoa madoka is in a constant state of sadness Getting less and less time for her to become a magical girl, too, We're because uh, we're still not there yet. She still hasn't done it. She's drained. So it's good that she's there to help her out after that, because she's pretty tired. All right. I have no idea where this is all going to go. I don't know how we're going to wrap all this up in just... These last few episodes, I don't know too much about the movie, if it's like the anime ending is good, but then also a movie which is also good, or if you really need the movie to conclude it, and the anime ending is kind of not an ending. I don't know, and don't tell me. I don't, I don't want to know. I'll see for myself. But, you know, Madoka becoming a magical girl, resolving anything with Sayaka, all these mysteries with Homura, whatever's going on with Kyoko, and Kiyube, and yeah, I, I don't know. But I'm excited because the show's been really good so far, and I've loved the pacing, so I still have faith that it'll be good going forward, too. Just gotta wait for her to make that plunge and become a Maho Shoujo one of these days. But yeah, you know, it's Geno Rabuchi. I don't know how much death we'll have past Mommy, but I could see Sayaka dying. Or maybe we're gonna have a happy ending somehow where everything is fixed and everybody's made fine again, which I don't know if there's any likelihood in that, but I hope for it. Because that'd be nice if they end up happy. But I, I, everything I've heard about Madoka is people talking about it being dark. So people might die. Sayaka, I don't know if she'll get over this. But real quick, while the OP is still playing, if, let me say that if you enjoyed these videos, subscribe to the channel. Madoka comes out on Fridays with other videos every single day of the week. This episode's called I Really Was an Idiot. <laughs> also, check out the description down below for... Twitter and Discord if you want to hang out there, and Patreon to support this channel and get these videos early. Polls and vlogs and all that. Thank you. Back to the show, though. Madoka and Sayaka in the rain. It's raining right now, too, outside. I'm very immersed because of that. Oh, yeah. It's like, you might not be able to feel it or tell yourself that, but I'm feeling it. Felt like she had to make up for that with detachment.
Yeah, and she just has a very negative view of the whole soul thing after what happened. She's completely, like, devalued herself as a person. Wow. It's, uh... Like, it's really hard to listen to her say that stuff. Because, you know, I don't agree. And it's like you're being way too hard on yourself. And it's so sad that she's entered this mindset. And you just want to, like, shake her and be like, stop being so hard on yourself. But also, I understand why she feels this way. And now she's telling all this to Madoka. Ah. And, like, that's harsh, too. But she's also not wrong. Holy shit. You just sit there and watch me suffer instead. They're, oh my god, their friendship has fallen apart. Madoka is <laughs> poor, I feel bad for her. Because it's fair to not want to enter the life of this dangerous, magical girl world, but... Oh. And of course, Sayaka, she's not entirely, like, emotionally detached. She feels bad about what she just said. Oh, these character relationships are so good. I like them a lot. I can't wait to learn more about Homura and the wall virgins. Always eating, and now we know why. <laughs> it adds so much context. Kyoko's not a fan of Kyubei anymore either. What? Okay. Oh, I see, because of the way she's been feeling. Is she in danger of, like, becoming a witch? Because I, I theorized about that before. And he's like, oh, you know, Homura, they just... All this fucking shit about Homura, all this stuff that she knows, and we don't know any of it. Yeah. I don't know the exact... I don't know if, like, a witch is somehow born from that separately. She becomes a witch, or just something else entirely. She's not in school, though. So did Hitomi confess? I assume she did. What's the status on that? Or did she say... I don't know if that's, I don't know what the time frame is for how long it's been since then, so she might be about to do it now. Is Sayaka gonna show up or something? Yep, she just wants to walk with you. He sounds very much like a girl. Obviously voiced by a, a woman, but still, it just it's very clear. He's young. They're still pretty young, right? So.
Sorry. To think that it wasn't that long ago when they were just living their normal day-to-day -day lives and everything was fine. And now all this shit. Oh, he's kind of embarrassed. He's like, oh. And of course she's there. I, I thought so. What is she going to do about it, though? I think just sulk. She's making it even harder on herself. Watching it. And now taking out her anger elsewhere. Damn. Because, you know, I talked before about, like, them being so young with the whole relationship thing, but, you know, she still feels how she feels, and it's, it's clearly strong feelings. Oh, she's willing to help. I don't think she's going to take it, though. She doesn't like you. She's just... She's constructed this idea in her head that Homura is like a horrible person. Which Homura really needs to probably do a better job of telling them what she knows. I don't know her whole circumstances, but it's clear that she's not what Sayaka thinks. She's just going to let herself burn out. It uh, kind of seems that way. But she's trying. Maybe, like, deep down she knows it's not going to work, but she's trying anyway. Yeah, she's been trying to help Madoka this whole time. I want to save Madoka. So yeah, I do want to save you, just not for your own sake and for the reasons I was saying. I'll kill you myself. Is Madoka going to show up? Is she going to save Sayaka? Is she going to finally do it? Is she... Oh no, it's Kyoko. <laughs> Why would I expect Madoka to, <laughs> to show up? <laughs> it's not like her name's in the title of the show. <laughs> Still really interesting, though, how much the other characters get such a big focus, you know? Just the fact that her name is in the title doesn't mean anything. Uh, yes, she can. She just dropped a damn grenade. Would she have actually killed Sayaka? It kind of seemed like we were going that way. The hell's this conversation? Random assholes on the train? Whoa! What the hell's happening?
Holy shit, guys. Is Sayaka just gonna, like, beat these guys up? <laughs> this is a... It's the d dark scene, literally, obviously. I love the, the shadows and everything, and the, the black and white. Yeah, she's like, I'm trying to protect people, but there's people like this out there. Do you guys even deserve it? Whoa! Oh, man. Is she just gonna, like, ugh. Is this what it's going to take for Madoka to become a magical girl? I... Nah, he can't do it. He can't turn her back. That's one thing you can't wish for. Yeah, apparently you have great potential. Oh my, beyond incredible. Unimaginable. Why? Why? What's so special about her? Just because? Yeah, she made her choice. I wonder why, though. Even he doesn't know. You know, they could just go the route of just because. Holy shit. But because even Kiyube, Kiyube is, like, questioning it himself, that makes me think that there will be an actual answer. She could, like, bend the laws of the universe. Like, to what extent? What does that mean? Can she bring the damn dead back to life? Can she time travel slash cause someone else to time travel? Because that's what I've been theorizing for a while. Would I have the power to save Sayaka? I don't know how honest he's even being. Like, obviously she has potential to be very strong. He's not lying about that. But I don't know with this, like with the specifics, that she'll be able to help Sayaka. He might just be telling her that- WHOA! He might just be telling her that to get her to do it, but he was like, he was- she was gonna do it! She was gonna do it! <laughs> Like, it's clearly a joke at this point. Like, they know that you want Madoka to become a magical girl. And so even now, eight episodes in, when she's about to do it, they have Homura come in and be like, nope. <laughs> so you're supposed to be like, oh my god. <laughs> He's not dead, though. There's no way. He'll be okay. But still, that was surprising. Wow. So, from, like, the future that Homura is from, if that's the case, did Madoka, like, sacrifice herself there to send Homura back in time? And so she's really sad about that, and, of course, now is trying to prevent that from ever happening. That's what I'm going with in some fashion. Wait, yeah, you're finally realizing that there's, like, so much more to this thing. Do I know you from somewhere? But she's not revealing all the information. She's leaving it all in the dark. Seeing Homer a cry like this, though, is so different for her. Like, she's actually broken down and showing that she really cares. Oh, he's okay, yeah. Hi! 
spares. He, he just has different bodies that he can jump into. And he, he's eating it! What a fucking creep. Stop with the close-ups of his face. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> the second time. Time manipulation. Thank you. So she uses time manipulation? Okay, thank you. She's Finally, we get this kind of reveal. She's not from this timeline. Does that mean... Are we talking about, like, alternate universes? Are we talking world lines? Or are we just talking the future? I don't like the close-ups of his eyes. Incubator? What is he incubating? He takes in the, the, the grief seeds. Is he incubating the witches? Like, is he the cause of witches to begin with? And then also makes magic girls to fight them? To what end? Why would you do that? What? Are witches magical girls? If so, all of them? Just some? If all of them, then what is the point of all? I, I have questions. That looks bad. But she's starting to feel more despair than hope. Yeah. Uh. I look like Giorno's hair. Anyway, that's really sad. <laughs> Yes? Yep. That's not surprising in the slightest. That's... That was pretty obvious. But again, like... Do all... Are all witches former magical girls? Then what was the original magical girl made for, if not to fight witches? What were they, were they made for something else? Were there already witches and magical girls also become witches? Or were they made for an entirely different purpose? All for Kyubei's gain? Little fucker? God damn it. Shit. <laughs> I want to see what's going to happen. We got, we got answers. We made good progress and we got answers. And yet there's also still so many questions. Monica still didn't fucking do it. What a goddamn... She was gonna. She was gonna do it. And then they... <laughs> They trolled us entirely. Homura came in and stopped it, which is hilarious. Shit. Let's talk about it. All right, episode eight. This show is incredible. I really love it. Um, every episode just <laughs> more and more happens while Madoka still hasn't become a magical girl. So you've always got that feeling like, so much less has happened than you thought it would, just because the main character hasn't really been active in the main plot. But also, like, so much happens, and there's so much emotion to it all, especially considering the length of the show. It's one core, it's 12 episodes, and a movie. And like I said in the reaction, I don't know 
if the ending to the anime is a good ending and then the movie is just extra, or if you really need the movie for like the true ending, I don't know, don't tell me, I'd rather just find out on my own, but with the pacing that we've had so far, I've really enjoyed it. It's just like, how the hell are they gonna resolve all this in such a short amount of time? But I trust it because of how good it's been so far with the pacing and with everything that's happened and how it's handled all of these characters and hopefully we get good resolutions. Um, either actually, literally good, happy resolutions or at the very least, well done resolutions even if they're sad for all these characters and the story and everything. But yeah, like they've done so much in such a small amount of time and again it makes me sad that the show is so short because it's like i could spend so much more time here but if they're able to tell this story in a succinct amount of time and keep it tight then so be it as long as they cover everything that they need to but yeah madoka still still no maybe episode nine episode nine is often a, a big one in a 12 episode show, you know, you're you're getting to like the three quarters mark. That's when you gotta have the big moment and the big turnaround. So maybe we'll see what happens, but it was brilliant how they did it because she's about to do it, finally. And they know, you know when they were writing the show, they know that you're gonna be anticipating her turning into a magical girl every single episode. You're always gonna be wondering, is this it? Is this when she does it? This is when she does it, right? There was that one episode, was it seven, six? Was it six? Where I thought for sure she's gonna do it and then it didn't happen. So at that point, I'm just like, all right, just drag this joke on for as long as possible because it's pretty funny, I guess. Um, but they know that you're expecting it. So they definitely wrote this scene in here just to troll the audience. Like she's gonna do it and then bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Homura fills Kiyume full of holes, and it's like, oh my god. But I mean, I knew he wouldn't be dead just like that. Like, there's still time left in the show. He's not just gonna die just like that. If he did, it'd be pretty crazy, because then it'd be like, where the hell do we go from here? And she's gotta become one at some point. So I knew he wasn't dead, but uh, still, very shocking moment, and then just him showing up in the shadows and like eating the old body and everything. Really well done. But yeah, Sayaka, fuck. She's my favorite, she's been my favorite from pretty early on, and it sucks to watch a character that I really like go through all this emotional torment and suffering, but it's also really interesting and it adds so much more depth to her that just makes her even more so my favorite, and it's just, it's brutal. It's like I was saying last time, like all these characters and their, the reasons that they feel these way, this way, are reasons where you can like, you wanna grab them by the shoulders and just shake them and try to talk sense into them and tell them to, to stop being so hard on themselves and like explain them, explain this stuff to them rationally. But also you understand where they're coming from and why they're so sad, especially being as young and vulnerable as they are and in these traumatic situations where their emotions are constantly being toyed with and heightened and everything. And just the the connections between the characters, their relationships, and how they develop and fall apart. <laughs> it's it, There's so much in such a short amount of time. It's only been eight episodes, but I feel like it's covered so much. And I've gotten so invested and so sad for these characters. And watching Sayaka fall apart is just terrible. And like having to emotionally detach herself from all this. And yell at Madoka the way that she did. And again, like I... I I understand where she's coming from, how she's completely devalued her humanity and just she's just this thing and she doesn't even deserve life anymore and it's just getting worse and worse and does humanity even deserve saving and just letting herself fall apart when her soul gem is becoming tainted and she doesn't even care. And I understand from everything that she's been through why she's feeling this way but I just want to be like no it can be okay like your soul being separate from your body doesn't have to change who you are as a person you can still try to be a good person I know you had these bad thoughts about Hitomi but we all have bad thoughts sometimes and we we move past those and it's our actions that matter and you're doing good and you helped him and you're you were a good friend and they're gonna love each other, maybe, we'll see, and you can try to find somebody else and you want to give her these pep talks and say that everything can be okay, but it just all falls apart and she totally self-destructs. And then what she says to Madoka and just like tearing their relationship apart and telling her, oh man, because Madoka's saying like, just because you don't feel the pain, you shouldn't do this because I still do. I hurt in your place, like I'm hurting so much watching you. 
from the side, but then Sayaka takes the totally opposite angle, like, yeah, you're on the side. Why don't you fucking man up and do what I did and stand where I'm standing instead of just sitting on the side and watching me suffer. And it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like these, this shit is biting. Like, like what she was saying to Kyoko last time. Ah, oh, it's harsh. It's hard to watch. It's uncomfortable a lot of the time, but it's so good. I really, really love it because she's not wrong, but also I completely understand Madoka. She's a little girl. She doesn't want to die. <laughs> she doesn't want to be in this situation where she's fighting witches. But she also can't bring herself to abandon Sayaka and get out of the life. And I've said it before that it, it gets a little annoying because it's like, I, I need you to hurry up and make a decision. Even regardless of you being the main character, just being a character in the show. I need you to make a decision and stop being wishy-washy and nut up or shut up, Madoka. <laughs> and so she just tells her all that. And it's brutal, and you know that Madoka is so fucking sad already, all the time, and that probably just, it's raining, because sad symbolism. But it's like, oh my god, this girl is gonna just, just gonna hate herself too. It's, it's, it's horrible to watch. But, like, you, you feel the, the nuggets of truth that are in there, and it's just, it's really bad. And, like, it builds up to her wanting to finally do it and wondering what she can do. Like, can I fix Sayaka? Still weird that she never questioned if she could bring Mommy back to life, but now she's talking about having the powers of a god to where she could do anything. So who the hell knows what she thinks she can do or what she will be able to do, but that's her main thing, wanting to save Sayaka. And that is the thing that will finally make her willing to do it and become a magical girl. And... I want to know what the hell's up with all this. There's there there are great answers in this episode, but also still so many questions that are really intriguing. She has all this potential, and I fully believe Kyube when he says that. I don't know to what extent though. Like when he says, "Oh yeah, you could totally save Sayaka." Is he just saying that to get her to do it, or can she really do that? I assume that she is inc incredibly powerful and could be the most powerful one. But to what extent and also why? They could leave the answer as just because. Some people are just more powerful. Some people just have latent magical girl abilities for some reason. It could be because of her personality and because of the wish she'll make. Um, or there might be a more in-depth reason. And I feel like there will be because Kyube questioned it himself. Because he was saying, I don't even know and I would like to. So because of that, I feel like there will be a reason presented at some point. It might be just the power of friendship. She just loves people so much. I don't know. But... Yeah, um, like what abilities will she have? And I've been talking about time travel for a long time, just because Homura knows too much. She just knows who Madoka is and she knows everything and she's everywhere all the time. So it's like, okay, clearly she, and, and there's been like so much mystery. Even still, they build up more and more mystery on her when you think it's impossible. And them saying like, well, I did make her, but also didn't. And like, there's this, all this mystery surrounding her. So I was like, okay, she might be from the future or something like that, and that's why she knows all this and knows Madoka and knows what bad things are going to happen in her life, so she's trying to stop it. So now we know that Madoka can be like a universe-altering god. To what extent? I don't know. Can she just save Sayaka? Can she just bring people back to life? I don't know about that, but at least altering the laws of the universe, and we even get mentions of time manipulation here, it seems like that's what's going to happen. Although, maybe it's not her. Maybe it's just Homura. Because I was thinking, like, Madoka is the one who causes this time travel, time loop, whatever's going on, dimension hopping, whatever we're doing, but for some reason had to do it to Homura. And with this conversation, it feels like Madoka sacrificed herself to allow Homura to go back in time. But he also says Homura seems to have time manipulation abilities, so maybe it was all just her. And Madoka sacrificed herself to give Homura herself the chance to send herself back in time. Great scene. Homura, there's so much intrigue surrounding her. And we've known this whole time that she's not as bad as it may seem or as some of the other characters may think she is, like Sayaka. But it's always felt like you should really do a better job at explaining your situation. But we just have so little context into like what she knows, why she maybe won't tell them, what kind of trauma she's gone through. Because clearly she's gone through a lot. Why she cares so much about Madoka, but you know, that scene with Sayaka, like, you're right, I, there is a kind of ulterior motive here. I am telling the truth, I want to save you, but it's not because of you, it's for Madoka's sake. And if you're going to continue dragging her down, I may as well just kill you, and it seemed like she was actually going to. 
So she really cares about Madoka for whatever their relationship is, is in the future and whatever Madoka did for her. But that scene where she breaks down crying, she's been so cool and cold the whole time and so harsh. So for her to break down crying and show that she really, really cares was really hard hitting too. And so I don't know about the time manipulation thing. She's got her like explosion abilities. We see a grenade, which is great. It was a flash grenade, but it, it's cool to see more detail about her abilities. And I don't know about her time manipulation stuff. Is that why she's able to just appear everywhere? I assume that's the case. I guess that's her, her secondary ability. You know, she has her weapon, her explosive, which are her main thing. And then she has her secondary, which is a, uh, comes from her wish. So yeah, I guess the time travel must be coming from her. Because she's, she's really fast, and she always just shows up. You know, she she just ran to go catch Sayaka's soul gem. But I, either way, sometimes she just shows up. So that might be a, a time-related thing. She just, you know, it's the, it's the world. Just zawordo shit. But, yeah, it, that must come from her wish then. So Madoka must have sacrificed herself and died in the future. And so she doesn't want that to happen again. She wants to tell Monica not to sacrifice herself. People are going to be so sad when you die. And this is coming from a very personal place, clearly. So that must have happened. And so she... If she... If her... I'm just trying to think about all the possibilities here. Like, if her wish... Like, if she has time manipulation powers, that had to come from her wish. Meaning her wish had to be time travel related so did she not make this wish until after Madoka already sacrificed herself so Homura was just like a girl just some normal ass person that Madoka saved or something and she died and she was like make me a magical girl give me time travel powers and so she's time traveled to come and stop all this and for all I know she has gone through this multiple times she said she's seen like countless magical girls die so was that in the future? Was that in the past? Was that just on this loop? Like, he, when she says, I've seen countless magical girls die, does she just mean Mami, Sayaka, Sayaka, Madoka, and them? She's just seen them die countless times because she's like looping through this over and over again, trying to get it right? I don't know. What the fuck is Kyube doing? He's an incubator for witches, presumably, because he brought the, you know, the grief seed into himself. Magical girls become witches. This is not surprising at all. I theorized this episodes ago. I think that's fairly obvious and talking about them it getting tainted and I was wondering, okay, would they just straight up become a witch? And it seems like that's the case. I was considering other possibilities like a, a witch would just spawn from it separately or something else bad would happen. But most likely it seemed like they would become a witch. And then that's what's happening here. And it's, it's really sad for Sayaka just watching her watch Hitomi and Kiyosuke making it harder on herself, being as hard on herself as possible, punishing herself as much as possible, taking her anger out on familiars, not fighting witches, not collecting grief seeds because she wants to punish herself and she doesn't think she deserves saving and she doesn't think humanity deserves saving. And there's this really weird, awkward conversation on the train with these two assholes and she's like, is this what I'm fucking working for? There are people like this? And again, you get where she's coming from, but you just want to tell her, like, yeah, but not everybody's like that, and you've got to give people a chance, and do you really just get to choose who deserves to die and who doesn't, and you've got to you've got to do what you think is right, And but she's just fallen so far into despair and from all of this shit stacked on top of her. And uh, it just all culminates, and it happens. And that scene was really sad, and I got teary-eyed, and it seems like she's just become a witch, and I don't know if they're saving her. I don't know what kind of ending we're building towards. I want something good. I want something happy. I want Mad Madoka to have universe-altering universe powers where she can just fix it all. Bring everybody back to life and everybody's safe. Sayaka and Mommy and everybody. And I could see it happening that way, and I'd like it. But I, it's just, this show is really fucked up, and so I don't really see that happening. <laughs> um, so... I don't know. Maybe the show, maybe that's the benefit of having a show and a movie. You can kind of have both. You can have the show end like in a sad way, and then you can just kind of accept that as the ending if you want, but then you can watch the movie if you want a happy ending, or maybe they fix things. I don't know, but you know, if they if they hit you with a really strong, emotional, sad ending, that can be great too. But yeah, Sayaka for now is just a witch, it seems. She's just gone, I would say. Like, she's basically dead entirely. I don't know if there'd be any remnants of who she is left, but it seems like that's it. So unless Madoka actually finally does it, that's why I think it's going to happen next time. But I've been saying that the whole time. But episode 9, that seems like a good spot. Try to do it to save Sayaka. Will she succeed? If not, will she have to kill her? If Madoka has to kill her herself, that'd be pretty crazy. 
And if she doesn't succeed there, can she do it in the future? How are we gonna go about all this? Kiyube is an incubator, but like, what is the purpose of all this? Like, are there witches who aren't magical girls? And if so, he created magical girls to fight the witches, and they can also become witches too. If not, if all witches used to be magical girls, then what was the purpose of magical girls, like, if, if not to fight witches? If magical girls came first and were corrupted into witches, what were the magical girls doing? Were they fighting something else? Like this Walpa Viviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviv
there's so many different directions it's gonna go. Is Madoka gonna sacrifice herself in in the end, in the long run? She said she wanted to be useful to, to somebody. She wanted some kind of purpose. Is that what it's gonna be? Is she gonna learn that sacrificing herself isn't good and that it causes too much pain and it's not worth it? Hope and despair balancing out. How is that gonna work out? That seems to be a, a, a big theme at play. Sayaka has definitely fallen into that and been overwhelmed now by despair, you know, is a I'm hoping, because they're talking about that, the evening out of hope and despair, that it won't be like the saddest ending possible, like there might be sad elements to it, but also hope. And uh, I don't know, I'm just very excited to see how it plays out, because it's been fantastic, and uh, I just, I hope it can stick the landing. And I have no reason to believe that it won't, so yeah, this is become a favorite show of mine for sure and you know depending on the rest of it we'll see how high up in that favorites list it can get but it's been phenomenal so yeah let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments down below and we can talk about it some more if you'd like also check out uh, the description down below for all those links to patreon and whatnot and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed thank you all so much i appreciate it and i will see you in the next one